Thanks for stopping by. I'm Daniel Ray, staff apologist with Watchman Fellowship, here to answer the question, are science and Christianity compatible? The answer is yes. Grab yourself a pin, a a little pin like this. You'll need one. I'm going to use it as an example, and if you have one in your hand, it makes it that much cooler. And God saw the light, that it was good, and divided the light from the darkness. In March of 2018, I had the wonderful honor and privilege of working with a veteran Hubble Space Telescope astrophysicist, Dr. Anton Kokomo. He, along with my master's thesis advisor, C.S. Lewis scholar, Dr. Michael Ward, came together for an evening called Astrophysics and Fantasy, Hubble Meets Narnia. That event was the genesis of our book, The Story of the Cosmos, How the Heavens Declare the Glory of God. Now, Dr. Kokomo is probably the most famous person you've never heard of. He was chiefly responsible for imaging the Hubble Deep Fields projects and releasing those images to the public. Grab the pin I gave you, and if you were to hold that pin out at arm's length and you held that head of a pin up to the sky, the spot of sky that the Hubble Space Telescope took a picture of was no bigger than the head of a pin held out at arm's length. thousand galaxies or more in a spot of sky no bigger than the head of this pin. The audience was so enraptured by what Dr. Kokomore was presenting, you could hear a pin drop. This is a quote from Dr. Kokomore that is featured in our book, The Story of the Cosmos. Quote, it is quite possible to contemplate the grand scale of the universe as revealed by modern astronomical science from the perspective of faith, where God is viewed as its creator, as revealed by scripture, and that science and faith can be fully reconciled in this context. Now what you are about to hear are clips from interviews that I have conducted with actual scientists researching in their fields who are devout Christians. This is Dr. Guillermo Gonzalez, who is a planetary scientist and an astrobiologist. You know, the the Apollo astronauts looking back at the Earth when they went around the moon, uh, uh, some of them said that, okay, it looks insignificant uh, against the vast blackness of space surrounding it. This is tiny mm. blue dot, I like, and that's the view Carl Sagan has. Yeah, uh, It's insignificant because it's so tiny compared to the vast universe. But uh, other astronauts thought, oh, look at this precious blue jewel yeah. amongst this sea of blackness surrounding it. Uh, it's so special. Uh, so uh, people have been looking at it uh, with two perspectives and with this discovery that we made that the earth seems to be very special in, in offering opportunity for scientific discovery uh, I think it gives even more evidence to the earth specialness. before we knew it was special in its ability to host life mm-hmm. uh, and its habitability and the more we discover things in our solar system for example we see just how special the earth is in that quality supporting life with all these other dead worlds. And did you know that the Saturn V rocket was designed by a former Nazi rocket scientist, Dr. Werner von Braun? Dr. Braun became an evangelical Christian after the end of the war and ended up designing the Saturn V rocket for the United States space program. Dr. Braun says, quote, to simply dismiss the concept of God as being unscientific is to violate the very objectivity of science itself. This is Dr. Tom Rudelius, who is a Christian and a string theorist. That it's really incredible just that math describes our world, uh, and in such a, and in such a complex way. I mean, to 
to understand the, the particle physics of uh, of the Higgs boson, you need to understand group theory. You need to understand Lie groups. You know, you need to understand complex complex analysis. Uh, to understand th string theory, you have to, to know algebraic geometry. It's, it's really amazing how many different fields of mathematics show up in in the physics of our universe. So it, it's really an incredible thing. Uh, I think no matter what your religious background is, that uh, you know, it, it's just it, it's incredible that this stuff all works. That that math actually describes the the world around us uh, in such an amazing way. Does this does this beg some larger explanation? Some uh, something like God to explain this? Because after all, the, uh, if you know if atheism is true, if the world just is the way it is for no reason. It's sort of this bit of cosmic serendipity that the universe actually just follows these these laws, these mathematical equations. So if, if I were an atheist, I think what I would say is that the reason why the universe follows these mathematical equations is because, in fact, our universe really is nothing more than just pure mathematics. And these laws that are out there don't simply describe our universe, they actually define the world around us. Mm. Now, as a theist, I think that, uh, in fact, the better way to understand our universe is not as some sort of giant mathematical structure, but rather as a cosmic narrative, as some sort of larger story in which you you and I are, are characters. And it raises the question of what, what the, whole, the whole point of this is. And from, a, from an atheistic perspective, if our world is nothing but a mathematical structure, I have no idea what the answer is. But I think that this is where uh, Christianity really comes in to focus. Because I think Jesus shows up in the story and he really is the hero that our story deserves. Mm. And if Jesus really is, you know, the risen son of God, then it gives our lives and it gives the whole human story a new trajectory and a better ending mm. and it really makes sense of th this world of makes sense out of this world as a story and that this is a, a story about God's coming to our world and redeeming it in restoring his creation and in ultimately setting all things right And this is Dr. Sarah Salviander. She's a personal friend, an astrophysicist, a black hole specialist, and she became a Christian through her study of astrophysics. Two of my physics professors, whom I admired very much, and to discover that they were homeschooling Christians, and it was like, wow, okay, you know, because up to that point, I had thought that Christianity actually was something that made people kind of intellectually weak and foolish, and it's like, what do you need this crutch for? But learning that these very intelligent professors that I admired were Christian kind of got me intrigued. And so gradually I kind of ratcheted down from being this hardcore anti-theist to being just like, mm, kind of just this agnostic. And at, I think it was between my sophomore and my junior year, I got this research internship at UC San Diego at the Space Center there working on cutting edge research in cosmology, we're trying to study these really deep space phenomena, quasars billions of light years away, trying to discover how much normal matter there is in the universe by studying their spectra. And I remember just thinking, you know, this is pretty wild stuff. This is way out of the center of mass kind of stuff you learn in school. Stuff that everybody's known for hundreds of years. Like this is stuff nobody's ever looked at before. And what amazed me is that the universe is ordered in such a way that we could actually answer these questions. You know, about things that happened billions of years ago, billions of light years away from this tiny little chunk of rock that we live on. And it was like, something wants us to know this stuff. And I remember I was walking across that La Jolla campus, which if you've ever been there is absolutely beautiful. Walking across on this sunny day, I stopped dead in my tracks and I went, God, that's the most reasonable explanation. God created this universe and wants us to know about it. This is why it's intelligible. 
and I became a theist right on the spot. I mean, I had no idea I was headed in that direction. I had to go where the evidence leads, and I realized this is the God of the Bible. I also believe in Jesus Christ because the evidence was so solid for that, and I decided to become Christian. This is Brother Guy Consolmagno. He is the chief astronomer at the Vatican. Brother Guy's specialty is meteorites. <laughs> of all the things that motivate people to do this esoteric work, uh -huh. whether you think you're an atheist or a theist or any other religion, what makes you want to go every day back to the lab or sit in front of the computer and do the tedious day-to-day -day work that maybe once every three years will lead to an insight? Yeah. And the answer is the joy that comes from that insight. Yes. The joy when suddenly you see a pattern you hadn't seen before. Mm. When you suddenly feel right with the universe. Mm. And of course that joy, number one, has to be truth. It we does. don't know that the truth is perfect, but we know that whatever we've gotten has gotten us a little bit closer to the truth. Mm. Well, think of what that means. It means it's it's something transcendent that we are yearning towards. Right. And that transcendence is the truth. Uh, I think I've just defined God. Now, it's not <laughs> the only thing God is, right. but certainly it is a manifestation of God. It's being surprised by joy, in, you know, in the words of C.S. Lewis. And so anyone who's a scientist, um, you know, science is a very rational, very logical activity. But all reason, all logic has to be based on axioms. You've got to start with assumptions about the universe. And these assumptions are fundamentally religious assumptions. And this is veteran astronomer, Dr. David Bradstreet, a committed Christian and professor at Eastern University in Pennsylvania. He is a binary star expert. This false idea that there's a, a, a war between science and faith. You know, we, we really need to be challenging our young people to go into science and be leaders in science because it's it's not a conflict. Mm. It's really just ignorance on both sides. It's an ignorance of what science is and what it can't do. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it's an ignorance of scripture and, and how to interpret scripture uh, properly. There's ignorance on both sides. Uh, and I really try to make things come together that way. And, and my, my students know what I believe. I'm a believer in Jesus. I'm going to heaven because of his death and resurrection. And so, you know, you have to deal with it. I'm a scientist. I do science. I'm, I do research. I do curriculum development uh, for planetariums. So I'm, I'm very active. Uh, but I'm also a, a, a devout believer in Jesus. So it's like, well, how do you reconcile those two? For me, it's... It's just who I am. It's just not an issue. And this is Dr. Luke Barnes, a Christian and an expert in the fine-tuning of the universe. That the universe was constructed by a fine-tuner is not what fine-tuning means to a physicist. As a bit of jargon, it just means that of all the possibilities, only a very small fraction do the interesting thing that you're interested in. That's all it means. I think what fine-tuning points us to is an interesting feature of the laws of our universe which is not shared by a whole heap of other possible laws. Our laws do interesting things like permit the existence of life. What you want to avoid at all costs is a picture in which there are two things. There's the stuff that God does and the stuff that science explains. That is a bad idea. Because if you're a theist, God made the whole thing. And what science is doing is explaining the stuff that God did. So there aren't two things. There's one thing, the stuff that God does. Most of that stuff, the vast majority of that stuff is so rational and so precise and so ordered that we can you do physics with it. We can describe it using mathematical equations. There is not the stuff that God does and the stuff that science explains. The reason why we need to get rid of that particular idea is because it gives the naturalist 
the atheist the idea that whenever science explains something, they get to reach over and pull something out of the God pile. Right? And unfortunately, a lot of Christians kind of fell for this. And so what they need to do is go and grab stuff out of the science pile and say, hey, science doesn't explain everything. Right? Who cares if science does explain everything? <laughs> okay? If science wants to find more order, more beautiful mathematical order in the universe, then let it. Right? It's like finding a deeper, more uh, sophisticated summary of the rules of chess. You don't thereby replace the chess player or the person who designed the chess board. And then, of course, there's James Clerk Maxwell, a committed Christian who discovered the relationship between electricity and magnetism and light. In his book, Science and the Nature of Christianity, Christian philosopher J.P. Moreland notes, quote, Maxwell's field picture was derived metaphysically from his theological convictions of the Trinity and Incarnation. In the Trinity, no one person can be viewed atomistically, but each must be viewed in relation to others. If the world somehow reflects its creator, then one can derive from theology a metaphysical picture of reality, wherein relations among the parts of wholes, relations between wholes, and the wholes themselves are just as fundamental as atomistic parts of those wholes. Thus, light should be viewed as a continuous field, a unity with different aspects, magnetic and electric in relation. So for my skeptic friends, the big question is, if Christianity really isn't true, what is your best explanation for how these people can see and reconcile Christianity with cutting edge modern science? Well, thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Daniel Ray for Watchman Fellowship, Soli Deo Gloria. And God bless all of you, all of you. All of you.